Hi everyone. So myself Anas, and today I am presenting you a data sufficiency question in the special series by IMS. Please pause the video, give your best attempt, and join me back for the discussion. I hope you all must have given your best attempt. Let's discuss this problem. Before that, I like to give some time for the options, and because the answer choices in a data sufficiency question are always the same in the same order. Therefore, I like to give you a shorthand representation to remember them really well. So if you observe option A, right? Okay, option A will be correct when statement one alone is sufficient, right? But statement two alone is not sufficient to answer my question. Option B will be correct when statement one alone is not sufficient to answer the question, but statement two alone is sufficient. And option C will be correct when neither of the statement alone is sufficient, but after combining, they become sufficient. Option D will be correct when both the statements alone are sufficient to answer the question. Option E will be correct when neither statement one is sufficient, nor two is sufficient, and neither after combining, they are sufficient. Let's focus on the question. A small size car costs $21,000, full size car costs $25,000 as per the owner, are there more small size cars than full size cars among the overall number of cars the agency bought? So my first point that, I, that I'm able to see here is that the question is a yes or no style question, a very important category in GMAT, guys. Yes or no style, DS question. They're asking our number of small size cars greater than number of full sized cars. Okay. This is a yes, no, DS question. Always remember a statement will only be sufficient if it is able to give us a definite yes as an answer to our question or a definite no. Okay, but not both. Let's uh, see this in the question. So let me write down the other information given here. So we, have, we also know that the cost of one small car is $21,000. I'm using K, right, just for the thousand. And cost of one full-sized car is equals to $25,000, right? Yeah, perfect. Let's start with option, uh, statement one. So statement one tells us the agency bought total nine cars. We can translate this statement like this. Let's say number of uh, small cars are X, number of full size cars are y so we can make an equation x plus y equals to nine now what can you say about x and y the sum of the cars is nine there could be multiple possible values for example x could be one y could be eight now the answer to my question is x greater than y the answer is unknown right but i can flip the table right yes or no if I take number of small cars as eight and number of full size cars as one, still the total is nine. But now the answer to my question, are number of small size cars more than number of full size cars? The answer is yes now. So we are getting both answers, no a yes both. That means the statement one is insufficient to answer my question. And whenever you get statement one insufficient, find the opportunity to eliminate option A and option D. All right. Now we are ready to move on for the statement two. So statement two says that the agency paid a total of $205,000 for its cars. We know that one small car costs 21,000. And if X cars are bought, can I say total amount spent on small size cars will be 21,000 into X. And similarly, total amount spent on full size cars will be 25,000 into Y, right? And that sum will give you the total amount spent. That is $205,000. Perfect. Now we can cancel off this thousand because that is common, right? So we have an equation 21X plus 25Y equals to 205. Now we might think that this equation looking very much similar to the first case. And again, we might, we might be getting multiple cases. And hence we can say statement is insufficient. Don't make haste, guys. There is a point where the GMAT people sets a beautiful trap, okay? Always remember, if you have 
a single linear equation with two variables, there might be a possibility that this equation have only a unique solution. Okay, how will you going to uh, try that, right? Always look at the constraints on the variables that you have. Observe, X and Y are what? They are number of cars, right? Have you ever bought 1.32 cars? Have you ever bought minus 900 cars? No, right? Okay, exactly. So what can I conclude here is because the agency is buying some small size cars, some wide, wide size, uh, sorry, full size cars, right? And there might be a possibility that they are buying only a, one, one of them, maybe only small size cars, maybe only full size cars. Okay, they have not mentioned, right, anywhere that they are buying at least one of them, right? Okay, so what can I say for sure from here is that the, num that the value of X and Y could be zero or could be a positive integer. They might have bought uh, some set of, you can say, small size cars and wide size cars, or maybe just exactly one of them, right? So what can I conclude here is that X and Y are nothing but non-negative integers. And what are non-negative integers? Non-negative integers are nothing but zero and positive. Okay, because number of cars they bought might be zero or might be a positive integer, right? For the individual, uh, you can say the category. Okay, perfect. So now to figure it out whether or not you will be having a unique solution, right? Or multiple solutions, you have to apply hit and try. And that is the only method, right? Because by hit and trial, you will get to know is there is there a unique solution exist or multiple solution exist. Let's apply that. So we need to remember in our head, what is that? That X and Y are nothing but non-negative integers. Non-negative means zero and positive. So guys, hit and trial, what, we, what I can do a simpler way is I can just write this equation in, in, in this manner. Watch, watch, watch out here. So y equals to 205 minus 21x divided by 25. Now hit and trial means that you put values of x and check the value of y. If it is satisfying what we already have deduced, then that solution will be acceptable. I will show you a, a, a part of it. Let's say I put x equals to 0 here. What, I will, be, what will be y? y will be 205 minus 0 upon 25 and that will be 41 by 5, which is not an integer. Hence, this solution is not acceptable. Okay, so my hit and trial doesn't work here, right? I mean, the first, uh, 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 I mean, see the first hit and trial. Now I will do the hit and trial again. Increase the value of x. If I put x equals to 1, y will be 205 minus 21. Um, that will be 184. 184 by 25 will again be a fraction, right? Again, be a decimal. So I can say again, this will also not going to work. So sir, do I have to keep on plugging in and check and checking? Remember guys, in GMAT, there is no calculator sec, uh, calculator in the section, right? That's why these guys are not that cool, right? Okay. They always try to give you such values where the calculation will not be that tedious, right? To try to search out that pattern, right? Observe with me. We have, we are looking for a number in the numerator that could be di divided exactly by 25. Think what no kind of numbers are divisible by 25. Or let's write the table of 25. 25 ones are 25, 25 twos are 50, threes are 75, 100, and so on. Observe that last digit is five or zero, right? Last digit is five or zero. So a better way of hit and trial is Try to think what value of X I should put so that the numerator can end up with either a zero or five. Then I will try to divide it by 25 and will check whether it is divisible or not. By doing this, the chances of getting the right number is higher. Okay. I'm not saying that any number ending with zero or five will be divisible by 25. That's not correct, right? 15 is not divisible by 25. Okay, but what I'm trying to say is if a number ends with zero or five, it has a higher probability that to, uh, to be divisible by 25 as compared to others. Let's do it. So if you observe here, x into one will be x only. So now think 205 minus last digit is x, right? You want the units digit to be 
either zero or either five. So five minus what will give you zero? Five only. Let's place x equal to five then. So if I place x equal to five, let me see what will I get. So if I put x equal to five, so twenty one five zero is one zero five. Two zero five minus one zero five is hundred, and hundred by twenty five will be four. So guys, x and y both are nothing but non-negative integers. Hence, we got the first solution right. Okay, and the solution is x equals to five and y equals to four. That is one solution I got. Now let's think: Is it possible to get multiple solutions? Okay, let me increase the value of x. So if I try to get five right in in the units place of this this subtraction, so let me put x as ten right because if I put x as ten, let me get some space here. So if I put x equals to ten, right, what will I get here? Y two zero five minus two hundred ten divided by twenty five. This is even negative right, minus five upon twenty five right. So y cannot be negative, right? Y can't be negative. So this solution is also not acceptable, right? Although minus five is not divided by twenty-five, but we are getting negative, right? Negative is not acceptable. Right? Now you can easily observe if you increase the value of x from ten, y will always be negative, whether fraction or integer, but it will always be negative. Try x equal to fifteen, right? Twenty-one into fifteen will be very much greater than two zero five, right? So you will get two zero five minus twenty-one as minus twenty-one into fifteen uh, as a negative number. So y will always be negative now, and even more negative as you increase the value of x. Hence, we can conclude that this is the only solution we can get. Only solution. Okay. Hence, we can answer our question: Is x greater than y? Yes, x is greater than y, and the answer we are getting is a definite yes. Therefore, statement two is sufficient to answer my question. That makes option B as correct. So please apply the same concept in the next question, right? And post the answers in the comment section, and don't forget to join me in the next video. Till then, thank you so much. Here is your question. Bye, everyone. Take care.